So I was walking around the other day and I found this and I thought, wow, what a great idea for a video. It might look like a piece of yarn, but what I really found was a sciatic nerve. Someone must have put it down and forgot to, to pick it up when they left. So I have an extra one. So today we're covering what is the sciatic nerve? What does it do? Should we really be stretching it? And finally, we're gonna cover some exercises that you can do to mobilize the sciatic nerve. Let me show you something. Now that my sciatic nerve is in place, what is it? It comes from the lumbosacral plexus, which is just a network of nerves coming from the spinal cord. It leaves this network of nerves and travels usually behind the piriformis, but the sciatic nerve is interesting because there's a lot of different variations. So for some people it goes through the piriformis, for some it goes in front of the piriformis. For some people it will divide and then maybe go through. There's a lot of different variations that can occur with the sciatic nerve. So sciatic nerve, largest and longest, it supplies the lower leg, nerve innervation to the lower leg. So we follow the sciatic nerve, it's gonna travel behind that piriformis, down the leg, Around the back of the knee, it's gonna split into two different branches. They are the tibial and the common peroneal nerves. And then if you follow those down, they will take you down to the ankle and beyond. Just to give you an idea of when we see this type of thing with the sciatic nerve, we see it a lot with nerve root compression in the lumbar spine, like a disc herniation. Also, the sciatic nerve sometimes just gets entrapped, whether it be the piriformis or the deeper muscles in the hip. Sometimes there's just some myofascial muscle restrictions in the lower leg that's preventing the sciatic nerve from, from moving well. You see, nerves are relatively inelastic. They don't really like to be stretched, especially an irritated nerve doesn't like to be stretched. But it's not like a muscle where a muscle has no problem lengthening, it has no problem shortening. Here's the thing though, nerves need to be able to tolerate a little bit of tension and a little bit of movement. Because the things that we do every day, the positions that we put our joints in are putting these different stressors on the nerve and the nerve has to be able to handle that. In comes neurodynamics. Neurodynamics, facilitating movement of the nerve along its interface or along the tissues that surround the nerve. So we know the nerve needs to be able to move, but how do we tell if the symptoms we're feeling are more nerve or muscle. What you wanna do is get in that position where you feel that tightness. So let's say for me it's here. I feel like a stretch or if you feel numbness and tingling, that's a good sign. There might be some nerve tension. But let's say I only feel a stretch. I need to add tension somewhere else than the lower leg to see if it's muscle or if it's nerve. So. In this case, I'm going to add tension by bringing my foot down. If that says, oh, wow, yeah, I feel that. Maybe you have some neural tension. Another one we commonly do in the clinic is have them get to a position and then maybe go chin to chest. And if that drastically changes what you're feeling, that's another sign that there could be some neural tension issues. Well, Jake, you said this video was about flossing. Well, it is. There's two types of exercises. A floss, where we tension one side and slack the other, and a tensioner, where we're just adding tension to the nerve. Two things to know before we jump into the exercises. Nerves get irritated rather easily, so more is not better in this case, and no pain, no gain doesn't really apply. You really want to listen to the symptoms that you're feeling. Let's start with the flossing exercise. We got two, one seated, one on your back. The seated, we need a chair high enough to where your leg is hanging. And all we're doing is we're tensioning in one spot and putting slack in the other. So for this example, we're tensioning here at the same time, we're putting slack here. And then it's gonna switch. As we bend, we not only flex the neck, but also around the back a little bit too. So tension, slack, and switch, and switch, switch, 
and switch. Remember, 10 to 20. Don't overdo this one. That's the seated version. The supine version, instead of using the neck and back to add and take away tension, we're going to use the ankle. So one leg is flat, the other one's up. You can grab behind the knee here. What we're doing, we're kicking up, so adding tension here. As you kick up, your toes are gonna to point towards the ceiling. So we're taking tension off. As we come down, the knee bends, the toes come towards you. So it's one, toes up towards the ceiling, we're pointing the toes, and two. Knee is bent, toes towards you. And that is the supine sciatic nerve loss. Once you have the nerve floss so the nerve glides down, then we can introduce some tensioning exercises. And they're a little bit easier to get, but they look very similar. So seated, we're gonna tension at the back. It's the same thing, but we're just not taking off that tension. So a little bit of slouch, a little bit of chin to chest. We come up, foot is pulled towards you. That's maximum tension throughout the leg of the sciatic nerve. And then we just let it go and put it back on full tension and let it go and back on full tension. You can do it this way with the knee doing the, the movement. You can also do it this way where it's happening more at the ankle. Tension, a little bit of slack. Tension, a little bit of slack. That's seated a seated tensioner. And then if we drop on our backs, it's very similar to the floss, except we're gonna keep this tension the whole time and our end position will be here with full tension. Again, you can add the, the motion at the knee like this or you could also do it at the ankle like this. Just know that when knee is extended or knee is straight and ankle is pulled, foot is pulled towards you, that's the position of maximal tension. So either one would work. 